So in this video, I want to offer a respectful, nuanced critique of another creator. Salem Tovar is a very successful commentary YouTuber who offers sociocultural analysis of online trends, not too different from my channel. Her latest video tackles the blockout celebrity. <coughs> Damn. Her latest video tackles the blockout celebrity trend, which I also talked about in a recent video, wherein I had more facial hair. But in my opinion, she misses the mark on the political context of the trend. Tovar's video centers on the Haley Bailey incident, in which influencer Haley Bailey showed up to the Met Gala dressed as Marie Antoinette and lip synced Let Them Eat Cake on camera. And she kind of thinks people are making a big deal out of nothing with this. This is also something we talk about in the other video. Tovar suggests that people are treating her as the modern day version of a Marie Antoinette in her obliviousness to wealth disparity and their willingness to give her the digital guillotine, so to speak. The thing is, early on, Tovar makes basic mistakes about the historical context she's talking about. First of all, she suggests that Marie Antoinette's death started a whole revolution. How about we give her the modern day version of the guillotine? Getting blocked. It just led to a whole thing. Just as the death of Marie Antoinette started a whole revolution, people are believing that giving influencers and celebrities the social guillotine will do the same. But this, of course, if you know what happened in the French Revolution is not the case. It was ongoing for a while against Marie Antoinette and the king, and it eventually sort of ended with killing her and the king. And this is relevant as far as a point she draws from this, which is that she says that people are trying to spark a revolution similarly by giving Haley Bailey the digital guillotine, which of course that's not how that worked in the first place, and it's not what's happening here. Today's digital guillotine is essentially people trying to punish celebrities for being complicit in oppression. Relevant to this, and maybe the video's central flaw, or at least the one that reveals a lot, Dovad doesn't mention um, the P word at all in the video. The thing is, support for Palestinians has been one of the driving points of this trend if it still is even happening. You can see that in a lot of the posts that make up the trend. The context of an ongoing political situation which has sparked a mass popular movement in support of an oppressed people, and thus an aim to draw more support for them by several means, including urging those with large platforms to spread awareness and to spread donation links, presumably, and urging people with money in general to contribute financially. Now, I want to clarify before I go any further that this is not a diss video towards Salem Tovar. I don't have any beef with her. I don't want anybody to send her any hate comments or harassment at all. This is just a critical conversation that I'm trying to have because I think it gets to a larger point that I see quite often, which is a sort of dismissiveness towards an idea of performative activism on social media. And I assume that Tovar, just like myself, is willing to listen to constructive criticism and try to learn more and get to, I don't know, help make the world a better place like the rest of us. That said, Tovar is not just wrong in suggesting that this movement is only about wealth disparity generally and not pointing out that it's related to this. She also thus misses why said wealth disparity is so grotesque, given that it comes off of the back of, and with utter disregard for, oppressed people being massacred for their land. Dovar then states that the problem is, in their opinion, influencers are not as aware as everyone thinks they should be. And this is a severe misunderstanding. The problem isn't that people doing this trend simply expect or think celebrities are socially aware and thus become disproportionately mad when they aren't. The problem is that it's bad that celebrities aren't socially aware. It's bad that they're insulated from politics. They should be more socially aware. They should be hoarding less wealth. This is important, but they're not. And this digitine, whatever you think of the efficacy of it, whether it's well done or not, in my opinion, it is a useful trend to examine and in some ways is encouraging but not at all a real political movement in the way that really needs to happen. Whatever you think of it, it is a trendy attempt to hold these celebrities more accountable. The reason Tovar misses the point is quite related to the title of their video. But before we get into that, here is a word from Elliot from the past. Elliot, don't, don't cook that tofu in the fridge, it's expired, don't do 
This video is sponsored by Delete Me. Everybody knows that I have a bit of a public platform and I've always wanted to do a better job of protecting my online safety. This is something that's quite important to me, but I wasn't sure where to get started. Thankfully, today's sponsor, Delete Me, offers a very useful service. It can help delete your data from the internet by checking around for websites that store your personal information and taking the time to remove it. You see, speaking of shady people with bad motives, there are these folks called data brokers who collect personal info from all types of places and then sell them to CD websites. If you don't take the time to get that info removed as much as possible, you may be at risk of harassment, identity theft, and stalking, among other things. Especially when you express sometimes political views online like I do, those can be serious threats. I recommend Delete Me because it addresses these issues very simply and effectively. I found the sign up process to be straightforward. I didn't really have any issues understanding what to do or understanding the UX or how the process works. And I love how communicative and available customer service is. I encourage you to protect your personal data with Delete Me. And now you can use my coupon code SANG to get 20% off of all US Delete me packages, including ones that can help your family as well as yourself. You can also click the link in the description, join deleteme.com slash S-A-N-G and get straight to protecting your data. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video and let's move on with the show. So Tovar's point, as indicated in the title of the video, is that people should stop using celebrities as their moral compass. And that's not a bad point in and of itself. But as far as a characterization of the situation she's describing, it's a total misunderstanding on many levels. So what is a moral compass? When describing a person or a thing, a moral compass is someone or something that serves as a standard for guiding moral choices, judgments, or behavior. But even in Tovar's, I think, butchered description of the events with Haley Bailey, it's clear that that's not what's happening. People are using their own moral compasses, which are quite different from Haley Bailey's, to criticize Haley Bailey's. They're not using her moral compass at all. They're saying it's bad. And this is sort of the point of the movement, if you can call it that overall. It's criticizing celebrities' moral compasses, or lack thereof, if you know what I mean. In fact, those who use celebrities as their moral compass are also the ones being criticized by this trend. The staunch fans and casual media consumers that don't want to think critically about the world around them, about why wealth disparity exists, about the exploitation that happens in the first world, etc, etc. But in fact will rest easy, knowing that whatever is cool with their favorite celebrity is cool with them. Tovar's first additional argument is that the problem with Haley Bailey's apology was her attempt to seem relatable. I never would have chosen a sound on purpose to highlight wealth disparity or elitism. I never even thought it would be taken in that way. Wow, that sure was a good explanation. I hope she doesn't ruin it with anything else. Taken in that way because I wasn't elite enough to even be invited to the Met Gala because I'm not elite. I'm a normal person. Girl, well... I spoke too soon. A normal person? A normal person? Here's the thing. Haley Bailey trying to be relatable in her apology was a bad choice. It was cringy. It was the source of a lot of the shtick that she got and a lot of the attention that this apology received. But it wasn't the real problem. The problem was that the apology was as a whole problematic to begin with because it wasn't addressing the real problem. It was only looking at it as, I did something in poor taste and not, I'm completely ignoring a political issue that people are urging me to stand up on. In fact, Tovar barely addresses this supposed apology flaw and then quickly moves on to, honestly, some pretty bad faith arguments that if they would have come from somebody who doesn't have as progressive of a reputation as Salem Tovar would be considered this kind of almost right-wing centrist liberal dismissiveness of social justice movements. You forgot the ukulele. Okay, let's not take it that far y'all. There is no way that some of you guys are comparing her to a literal murder. I feel like people are valid in feeling angry and wanting some sort of justice or starting a movement, but I feel like they're misplacing their anger and justice in the wrong areas. At one point, she's basically like, 
If capitalism bad, then why iPhone? Watching from District 12, they said as they scroll on their iPhone 12 Max Pro the third that was made by the most exploitative company ever that makes $383.3 billion a year while they use an app that literally funded the Met Gala, the very event that they're supposedly mad at. She argues that Haley Bailey's critics are hypocrites because they are commenting from iPhones and Apple is highly exploitative and because they are using TikTok, which is also highly exploitative and funded the Met Gala. Well then, just throw everything that they're arguing out. It just doesn't matter then because they're using an iPhone. What are we doing? She says that if we wanted to really do something about the problem, we should all delete TikTok. If you really wanted to make a difference, we could all just delete TikTok from our phones. I understand why having a phone may be a necessity nowadays, but TikTok is definitely not a necessity. And I think this is a silly argument to begin with for many reasons, but one of the things that I find funny about arguments like these is that, okay, if that's the way we should really address the problem, then why aren't you arguing we should do that? Why isn't this video about how we should all delete TikTok? Because you clearly want to solve the problem, right? Like you care about the problem, don't you? She then critiques how people did not call out other influencers for using the audio before Haley, which is fairly true. I mean, it was a trending sound after all, and that's why Haley Bailey used it. One of the points Haley Bailey brought up is how there were also many other users and TikTokers who were using that same exact sound. However, she's the only one who got a lot of criticism for it. When I film my TikToks, I love to use trending audios and sounds that people are currently using, and this was one of them. Unfortunately, because Haley Bailey lied about attending the Met Gala, she did in fact attend a Met Gala after party, and unfortunately, because her apology came across tone deaf. These really good points did not come across whatsoever, but outside of the context of the apology video, these points remain true even outside of her situation. As an audience, we pick and choose what to be mad at. But Tovar uses this to essentially argue that people who are criticizing Haley Bailey for this are hypocrites and morally dubious. They just want to criticize her harshly for it because of how she looks in the situation, she got a lot of attention, and because she looks cringy in her apology trying to be relatable, and lying about not being at the Met Gala, which again, is not the problem with what happened there. But addressing that argument specifically, many if not all of the TikToks the web shows of other people using the sound don't have anything to do with the Met Gala, which was a central part of the critique of wealth disparity and celebrity politics. They're just clips of influencers using the sound while doing pretty makeup looks or often while dressing like Marie Antoinette in general, oftentimes in their bedroom. <laughs> While meanwhile, Haley Bailey was at one of the most viewed and discussed events of the year, which is organized and attended by some of the world's richest people, and there she flaunted her wealth in an offensive way, regardless of her intention. That's why she was criticized, and her apology doesn't address that criticism. She thinks the problem is that she used the wrong sound. The problem is much deeper than that. And on top of that, like the relatability thing is a little bit deeper than just she's trying to be relatable, but she isn't. It's the fact that she is acting like she doesn't have wealth to flaunt, which is blatantly not true. Now you may be asking at this point, does this guy just have a problem with people being rich? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, I mean, it depends on how you define rich, but uh, generally, yes, I do. That's a whole conversation for another video though. With this, every individual isn't going to get criticized the way Haley Bailey has because every individual isn't gonna get the same attention. The TikToks the lot shows are clearly not going to get the same level of attention as Haley Bailey did at the Met Gala. There's at one point one that she shows that has like 4,000 something likes and it's just someone doing their makeup in their bedroom. Obviously that person's not gonna get criticized for flaunting their wealth while a genocide is going on. Lastly, Dovard argues again that people expect things from influencers that are not realistic, that they don't know things because of their experience, and thus we shouldn't be surprised when they don't know things. We definitely need to have people who have platforms be educated, be in the loop of current affairs. And it's not much to ask them to be aware of these things or speak out on these things. However, I think we need to stop being surprised when these people who are out of touch approach a problem 
very wrong. And that's because that is not their expertise. These people are not philosophers. They are not politicians. I wouldn't go to James Charles to talk to our children about internet safety. You know, it's like giving very much that. We need to give this energy to people who know how to use it. People with influence no not that type of influence for some reason this type of influence in this case Dovad is suggesting that someone who dressed up as marie antoinette at the met gala using a TikTok sound quoting marie antoinette should be almost forgiven for not knowing who marie antoinette was and I kind of find that bizarre, but not because I think Dovar is entirely wrong. It's quite possible that Haley Bailey doesn't know very much at all about Marie Antoinette or the French Revolution. But I guess the difference between me and Salem Tovar is that I think that's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing to dress up as someone who was responsible for the death of tons and tons of poor people, who was near the helm of a super oppressive regime, and who, in that fake quote, let them eat cake, is mocking poor people. And I think it's a bad thing for a person to have so much money that they struggle to resonate with the rest of the world and connect with any struggles at all. And I'd like to think Dovar thinks this too, but in the video she kind of says that she doesn't. At one point saying to Haley Bailey, you are not relatable, and that is okay. She actually was doing a very good job addressing everything, but it wasn't until she pulled the whole relatability card you are not relatable and that's actually okay i don't know if that's okay though the main point of the video seems to be if famous people seem like they're trying to be a good person and mess up we should believe them and we shouldn't criticize them too harshly towards the end she even starts to say that women influencers are treated differently from men influencers which is not untrue of course misogyny dictates how we see women in society versus men and makes it easier for men to get away with stuff that is quite obvious that is quite true so this would be a great point in a different context in this context it's being used to dismiss the dark political implications of Haley bailey's actions when made in this context it comes off like a rushed attempt to dismiss criticism of a likable celebrity this is especially the case because for some reason she uses logan paul as her counter example of a a man influencer who is not held accountable for his actions and here's the thing i don't think the people that are criticizing Haley bailey love logan paul i think the crossover between those two audiences is very minimal. Male influencers are allowed to be goofy and have fun and get things wrong and make mistakes. They're allowed to film bodies in a forest and still go on to have a very beautiful, thriving career. But guys, he's just being a little silly guy. He didn't know any better. There was no way for him to know any better. Plus, it was such a long time ago. Can't you guys just be nice and merciful? No one giving that energy to any female creator, bro. And while female influencers are disproportionately criticized when compared to male influencers this does not mean that Haley bailey should be victimized in this situation nor compared to the women burned at the salem witch trials which is a thing that tovar does in this video throughout history women have always been the scapegoat to every revolutionary movement even in history women could be standing there and doing nothing and people are like Wait! Seeing that in a modern day lens where they're seen as disposable, as people who can't grow or learn, as people who aren't worthy of unconditional love as we have seen time and time again, that is given to male influencers all the time. How much do you pay for rent in New York? Oh, it's a lot. Haley Bailey has a $17,000 a month apartment, as Tovar points out in the video, and lost maybe a tenth of her massive subscriber base for flaunting her wealth excessively and tackily at one of the world's wealthiest events. Tovar tells us this is an example of how women influencers are treated as people who can't grow or learn, who aren't worthy of unconditional love. <sighs> to be clear, everyone is worthy of unconditional love, including Haley Bailey. But that unconditional love does not have to come from everybody who interacts with her on social media. It does not have to come from the public. And even if it did, loving someone means helping them hold themselves accountable. It means calling them out when they do bad stuff. I understand that internet comments can be very harsh, especially 
towards femme creators. But that does not mean that we should invalidate the legitimate criticisms facing them. Which, if you're arguing that the only way to legitimately criticize her is for trying to be relatable in her apology and lying about attending the Met Gala, and not for, I don't know, not using her platform to help people in need, then yes, that's what you're doing. <laughs> Lastly, she argues that we should focus on people who are trying to do the right thing, who are trying to learn, and ignore the celebrities who are clearly not interested in doing better. Let's focus on the people who do care. Let's focus on the people who want to learn, the influencers who are trying, and let's stop being so angry at the people who are getting it wrong. If they're continuously getting it wrong, turn off your phone and go outside, I don't know. I have some sympathy for that viewpoint. Yes, it is often better to work with the people you can work with and not use your energy on people who clearly are not worth it, but that's not quite what's happening here. The problem is that the celebrities and influencers who do things wrong have negative impacts. There are consequences to the bad things they do. In this case, Haley Bailey, it is true, was just the face of a larger problem. She did still do a bad thing, but a lot of the attention that is being brought to her seems a bit disproportionate when you consider how much worse other celebrities do. But, again, something that Tovar misses in the video is how much criticism is also being leveraged at other celebrities, including someone like Zendaya for not doing much about this movement at all and for wearing blood diamonds on a red carpet. As it so happens, Zendaya is praised at the beginning of Tovar's video for looking good at the Met Gala. Tovar seems to equate harsh comments with blind hate and persecution. They do this rather than analyze them as an attempt to divest from those complicit and problematic celebrities. You can't just start a trend of going to block a specific influencer who is doing bad things without posting about it online. It's not like everybody's just gonna all decide to stop following a celebrity without talking about it without seeing the reasons why. And that's supposed to be the thing Tovar is arguing for instead. Tovar wants to argue that you expect too much from celebrities and influencers. That because of their position in life, they're generally almost never gonna rise above their station to do something about real problems. This argument lacks a type of systemic critique because you can make one with that point. If the environments that these celebrities are brought up in, which coddle them and give them all the resources, are making them into bad people, then shouldn't we change the environment? Shouldn't we make it so that they are, for instance, greeted with unpleasant consequences for doing things wrong? Likewise, if we are the ones who hand these celebrities and influencers so much status and fame, then should we not start calling them out as a way to rebuke when they do wrong, as a way to take that power back in a sense? Honestly, throughout the video, Tovar's arguments are inconsistent. She criticizes people for using iPhones and TikTok and daring to shit on an influencer. And again, I'm not trying to send any hate towards them at all. But I think that this happens because Tovar, like many of us, identifies with the rich and successful celebrity. Tovar, like many of us, is a little too willing to walk in their shoes and think, gosh, I would hate it if that thing happened to me. Remember, Tovar doesn't see a problem with them being unrelatable and compares them to the victims of the Salem witch trials at one point. Tovar doesn't see anything wrong with what Haley Bailey did aside from how she couched her apology. Ultimately, because of this, criticisms like these argue in favor of the status quo. This is why so many fall for these arguments, even though they are pretty illogical. It feels good. That's the point. It feels good to think of yourself as one day in this position of power and fame and status. And thus it feels bad to think about being called out in their position. And it feels good because it means you kind of have to do less work. You don't have to worry about whether or not the black celebrity people might have a point. You can just say that they don't and not engage and go back to enjoying the Met Gala and enjoying the influencers that are on your timeline. So this leads me to a big final point. Tovar's thumbnail reads, it's not that deep. And towards the end of the video, they make the point that it's not that deep, but it is. I think what I'm trying to say is it's not that deep, 
but it also is. It's a confusing summation of her argument that essentially we shouldn't look too deep into the politics of a lot of these celebrities and their actions. We shouldn't read political themes in the way that they post about their dresses. I won't be the first to tell you that it's not that deep is a problem phrase. Plenty of social media quotes have echoed that sentiment. To explain what I think is the problem with it, let me refer to the infamous blue curtain meme. To explain what that is and the problem with it, it's a meme about how blue curtains might exist in a story and your literature teacher might think that those blue curtains represent the depression of the main character. But in reality, maybe the author just thought, let's put some blue curtains in it. Maybe the curtains are just fucking blue. Maybe it's not that deep. This meme and greater discourse is much more prevalent in the literary analysis realm where it became a signification of dismissiveness towards overthinking symbolism and themes in literature. Shakespeare's essay, Why the Curtains Are Blue, The Implications of Being Uncritical, highlights the importance of overcoming this dismissiveness. We need to always be ready to think deeply about the implications of even the most minute things. Just as the story of the Titanic teaches us, it's sometimes the small things that have much bigger consequences. Of course, in today's day and age, billionaires are just going to repeat the mistakes of the Titanic in quite literal fashion. But they also can get away with that because generally they're insulated from consequences. Salem Tovar's analysis reifies this. It asks you to identify with the insulated, to sympathize with the wealthy and their plight, even if it means ignoring the subtext. It tells you that in the case of likable, powerful people, it's not that deep. But in the case of us and our iPhones and apps, it is that deep. We should be subject to scrutiny, not them. Here's the problem. It can be both. It should be both. It is true that, as Tovar posits, we should look at our own politics, not just those of celebrities, especially when we're just trying to dunk on them. But the inverse is also true. We shouldn't dismiss critiques of celebrities and their politics simply because we're focused on our own. And I also kind of doubt, by the way, that some of the people who do dismiss these critiques of celebrity politics actually do critique their own politics as well. Because, again, a lot of this comes back down to identifying with those celebrities in the first place. When Tovar advocates that we use kid gloves for influencers like Haley Bailey, she inadvertently abdicates them of larger responsibility. Because then, all you have to do is look like you care and like you mean well to avoid getting the sharper critique, the guillotine sharp critique. We should ask, who benefits from that? Because Clearly, the celebrities do. Even in a good faith interpretation of Tawada's point, celebrities will not receive nearly as harsh of a backlash for having bad politics. Especially as long as they look like they want to do good things, they can rest assured knowing that public opinion will always be on their side. And those of us, like Tovar, who seem to think it's okay for celebrities to be more detached and selfish in this way, can rest assured knowing we don't have to do too much work to call them out and also that we can continue to see ourselves in them because there's not any big problem with what they're doing. But a lot of what backs up this sort of point and stuff I saw in Tovar's comment section is that celebrities are irrelevant. They're not the real rich people. They're not the ones that are really doing the politics stuff. We got to target the, the, the real bad people, the politicians and stuff. Here's the thing. First of all, someone critiquing a celebrity for having bad politics is not necessarily saying I won't ever do anything else politically. Many people can participate in the block celebrity trend and also do protests, call senators, etc. But moreover, it does kind of matter what celebrities do. Their platforms are big, and that means something. The other day, I did a community post which quoted Twitter user Saeed DiCaprio, who also quoted uh, another tweet about Ariana Grande's PCRF donations which I don't even know if she donated herself, but she posted the PCRF link on her Instagram story. And merely by doing this, she helped raise a lot of money. But as Saeed DiCaprio pointed out, it goes a lot deeper than just the money. Celebrities being vocal protect people from being kicked out of their work or schools because it makes it less taboo to hold that same position, which makes it easier to call for policy changes. It's almost as if they're influencing 
public discourse, like they're influencers on, like the public is influenced by them. None of this, as I point out in my other video on this subject, equates to real direct action or a real political movement. But it does make a difference, not only in terms of raising awareness, but also lending aid to those in need. And in terms of motivating people who do use celebrities as a moral compass to not only support the things these celebrities support, but also to think more critically about what it means to use a platform the right way. When celebrities show their lack of awareness, we shouldn't just try to educate them. We should think critically about why it is that they do these things. We should think about why they are so wealthy and how we can change that. Knowing that wealth disparity is not just in poor taste, but has real implications. Because when the wealth of the world is all concentrated in a small group of people, that clearly means that a lot of other people are suffering. And in fact, that that suffering is what causes the wealthy people to have the wealth. Are you following me here? Are we going here? Celebrities' actions, like ours, matter. They should do better, and so should we. Because it is that deep. Thanks for watching. I have a Patreon now, guys. I have a Patreon. I have a Patreon. Please subscribe to my Patreon. For $1, $2, $5, $20 a month, you can subscribe and help me keep doing this YouTube thing because the algorithm's not helping me very much these days. On my Patreon, I have exclusive content where I talk to people like Noah Sampson and Lily Alexander, fellow creators who are awesome, about all manner of things. So feel free to check that out by subscribing today. And you can also join the channel and become one of these channel members who have their name displayed on the screen at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.